Hi everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. I am Denise and this reading is devoted to uh, seeing what the full moon uh, brings in for Joe Biden. Oh, and here. The reason I'm asking the question is I noticed that uh, his moon is in Taurus. It's at zero degrees. The full moon comes in at eight degrees. I conjunct Uranus, which is retrograde. So his part of fortune is at six degrees. So he's had Uranus cross over his part of fortune, and I think that's why he's doing so well, because, you know, wherever the part of fortune is in our charts, it's an area of life where uh, if you go towards that, you will do well. So his is in the fifth house of um, creation, recreating, uh, you know, it can be divine will, it, you know, if you're aligned with it. And it is natally at square his Pluto and in the eighth house. And of course, you know, he has had, um, he, you know, he, he's had some pain to endure, to go through and transform, you know, by when he's lost um, uh, his first wife and um, one of, I think one of his children. Yeah. And, and you know, with um, he's gone through drug, drug addiction, which would also be the eighth house. Um, uh, he's gone through his son being drug addicted and helping him through that. So, um, yeah, and then I think they lost Bo, I believe. Yeah. So, so you know, the eighth house, of course, is... Uh, uh, sex, death, rebirth, uh, transformation. It, it, it's the, a natural house for Pluto, Pluto and Scorpio. But he, you know, he has Cancer there on the cusp, which is about family, and then Leo, which would have to do with him, you know, loving generously, no matter what he's had to go through. Um, and then we can see, I, I see the 12th house as, as the house of vocation. I, I see the 10th house having to do with our public... Um, uh, could be persona, could be, you know, your public, your integrity within the public realm, within the, um, um, yeah, just public realm, professional realm. So with Neptune up there in Libra, I mean, he can be a bridge for divine love to come through. Neptune in Libra is excellent, and it's not even retrograde. I, I have it over here in the sixth house, and it's retrograde, and it's been... <laughs> I've reinvented myself in my service many, many times. But um, so he has, he has it up here in the, in the career point where people might not see him clearly for the loving you know, spirit that he is. Uh, but with the 10th house here, I'm, I'm sorry, 12th house here uh, for his vocation, notice he has a sun conjunct Venus in Scorpio. So he deeply knows how to love and uh, be in a place that's uh, very unity, you know, uni unification, like unity consciousness. And he can be a fighter for the feminine. And and then com on communication issues, of, of course, we know that he has gone through needing to um, overcome stuttering, but uh, it, it looks like because of this trying here to series, like that's a way that he can nurture others who have gone through it as well. And there's also an easy aspect, of, you know, the trine over here to Jupiter. So once he's deeply inside of what he wants to say, he'll eventually get the words out. And then it, it opens up a realm of, of, of love and kindness and, you know, everything that the family is all about, everything that's good for children, or, or can be everything that's good for children. So I'm, I am hoping, and uh, of course I'll do readings on it as we move along, but I am hoping that he can help to heal this, um, you know, these children that have been removed from their parents. I, I'm hoping that there's something that comes through uh, later on. And transiting, he has Pluto, Saturn, conjunct in Capricorn in his second house. So that is a very powerful, uh, you know, the second house is what you have. The eighth house is, is your resources with others and your, um, 
yeah, just pretty much resources with others when it comes to, you know, versus what's yours and what's theirs. <laughs> but notice that he has Pluto in the eighth. So, of course, it's not opposite because it's, um, you know, that would take about 125 years, you know, to have Pluto opposite Pluto. And um, now it could happen because Pluto has an ellipt elliptical orbit. Um, so it, it, it could happen in the future. For, for some people, but not for not for him. It's um, um, yeah. I well, you never know. You never know how long a person can live. <laughs> Just I'm not gonna even go there. But anyway, right now, what's important is that he has power in his value system, and he is laying the foundation with Saturn. He's laying the foundation of what he wants to have. Uh, moving forward in his life and what he wants to create and there's great power there there's a you know transformation of of that you can you can look at anybody's you know chart and see where pluto starts and all the houses that it transits through and you can see all the areas of life that have been transformed right so here he is started starting in the eighth house you know, here we go into the ninth house of politics and belief systems, and then, you know, his professional career, and then something larger with a larger group. And then he even went through Pluto through the 12th house. I mean, the dude has gone through Pluto over his north node. That's intense. I've been through that. Pluto over, over your uh, Chiron. I'm going through that right now. It's intense. Pluto over Mars. Well, when I had that, I went through menopause. <laughs> Intense. I, but, it, you know, changed my trajectory. But anyway, he didn't go through menopause. He's gone through. What, it's, a, it's a transformation of what you really want. It's a transformation of, of you know, everything that you're going to move forward from. And he's gone through Pluto over Mercury, how he communicates, Pluto over his sun, how he shines, Pluto over his Venus, how he loves. And then it went through his first house and completely has, you know, he's not the same guy. So any negative things that come through on the news about whatever he did in the past, he's not the same guy. That's what I want to say about that. Pluto over your ascendant, Pluto through the first house. So he deserves to have a whole new foundation, uh, whether it's financially or whatever it is. I, but, the you know, Venus rules this house. So this, this can be helping women transform. It can be deeply empowering to the feminine. It can be deeply empowering to safety issues. And especially with Uranus here over his uh, part of fortune and it's already gone across his moon. I mean, look at that as well. <laughs> Have. Uranus start here and and come all the way around. He's almost, you know, he'll have a Uranus return at 84, which is another huge, you know, like a leap in consciousness if you're, you know, evolving. I, I can't say that it's true for everyone. But with Uranus over his moon coming across or have gone across his moon, I think he had a big change into, okay, uh, this I will run for president. I will because it triggered his Pluto. You know, it it triggered the place where he has to protect, and he, with all this Scorpio energy here and Mars and Scorpio, with that stellium in Scorpio, he is deeply protective. He comes from protection, like protective love. So, and especially with the South Node in Pisces. You know, like in his mind, he can go to a, a, a very, very expanded place where he's really connected to Source. And yes, there is an inconjunct up here to um, Neptune. That just tells me that he he won't know in his in his you know um, uh, you know e ego mind. He won't know that he's channeling something from a greater consciousness. Like he might he might know. Maybe he does know. But usually with an inconjunct, you can't really see all that is there. But, but look at this. This looks like a, you know, finger of fate up here. From the moon to Neptune, from a south node. I should have highlighted. Well, hold on. Oh, I do. Hold on. This right here. This, oops. This is very powerful because it conjoins. He has... Um, 
sextile, I'm sorry, uh, south node sextile his moon. He should be a very good president for women and for the feminine and for uh, anything that is nurturing and anything that uh, is helpful to the family. And especially when it comes to safety and food and um, yeah, just survival. Well, more than survival, it's like being and having. He can be a powerful presence in, in how it can feel to just be in a peaceful place. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so so the, that's that's the reason I'm doing this reading is because I think there's this uh, the full moon, and you know, I'm I'm doing this reading on Thursday. No, wait, this is Wednesday. The full moon's on Saturday. I, the moon's probably crossing over his part of fortune right now, or it's it's getting ready to. It stays in. Yeah, no, it might be tomorrow, the next day. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right. I can't remember what degree that full moon is at. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's at it's at eight degrees. So, so yeah, it could be. It could be that uh, moving into it tonight or tomorrow, uh, the moon could be moving into Taurus. So yeah, so it's a, of course he'll have a full, you know, a moon crosses uh, moon moon conjunct moon every month, but he won't have. Uranus on his moon only every 84 years. <laughs> we only get Uranus transiting over something in our charts every 84 years. <laughs> so it's a once, probably a once in a lifetime transit. <laughs> Which is cool to, for us, you know, right now to have, to have him there. And, and then with that on his part of fortune, again, you know, once in a lifetime. So Uranus opens up things. It's the it's the light bulb. It's the great awakener. It's the aha. It's the divine mind. It is. Um, it can sometimes be shocking, or it could seem shocking, but uh, it's not really because it opens up and expands. Well, Jupiter does too, but but well, Uranus comes in and opens it up for good, and then. If it's shocking, it's because, you know, a person's kind of unconscious and then, and then now they can be conscious in that area of their life. But uh, when, when you're working in a certain direction, like he, he's been working all his life to, uh, you know, as a public servant. And yes, of course, he's been paid very well for it and he deserves to be. I don't have any issue with that. Um, but with, when it comes to Uranus opening up something, you know, in the emotional body and in the public image uh, and in your uh, public service, because he has Uranus in the sixth house, which is public service. Now, with that opening, I, I get the feeling that it's just going to bring through something really powerful that helps all of us transform. Like he's some, he's a conduit for this greater consciousness that can help us transform. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm happy to see that Uranus is at eight degrees and his Moon is at zero degrees towards because that tells me that that nervous tension that can come up, you know, uh, on the emotional levels, in the emotional body when Uranus transits over, he's already done with that. That's already happened. So, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I'm not going to say anything more about his chart uh, for now, just because it's, it would take too much time to dive in any further. Let's go to the tarot. So, how will the, let's let the tarot teach us how, how will the full moon affect Joe Biden? So the forces in motion for him, his challenge, challenges, his uh, past, present, uh, the cause and effect, the the um, the karma that's hanging over him, his future. 
and the most likely outcome. Okay, because, you know, full moons are a culmination. They open something up. I love seeing that full moon conjunct that part of, part of fortune. Okay, so the forces in motion, yeah, the feminine has been suffering. The family has been suffering, uh, creating a healthy new reality. It has been suffering. We have been held hostage by Donald John Trump and his swamp creatures that he brought in. And by all these other corrupt politicians. Uh, so that, that, that needs to change. Now, his challenge with the Five of Swords reversed, well, that, that is, that's actually not, <laughs> not a bad card to have reversed because that's, that's all about, uh, well, it's Venus and Aquarius, so there you go again, like thinking for the greater good of the whole. Uh, but it, it has us in uh, the realm of being very open to change, you know, breaking free. It can have you as well, uh, you know, like letting go of a past resentment. So I would think that uh, he's, he's in that realm of, you know, because when it's straight up, there's a deep inner conflict. And, of course, the inner conflict is always about, it's always a dualistic uh, misconception that has you in the realm of, like, good or bad, right or wrong, as pleasure or pain, as win or lose, you know, things like that. Um, and the task is to get into the unified consciousness where you put, you substitute or for and. There is, on earth, there is good and bad. There is right and wrong. And just because you made a little mistake doesn't mean that you're bad or completely wrong. And the same goes for other people. And you can create win-win situations, which is what, what it's about, especially when it's reversed. So I think his challenge is, is to not get into uh, arguments or fights about Donald Trump and to focus on how he's trying to um, get, get us back to the place where we create our own reality. I mean, well, what we all do anyway, but get us out of this like fascist um, regime that Donald Trump has been uh, holding us hostage by. And, and then also to heal, you know, to help heal the earth. So if there is any challenge in the future with him about, um, you know, like fracking or renewable energy, things like that, uh, we can we can get on him about that. If he needs support with that, we can get on him with that about that. And I I believe that he would be listening deeply because he has sun conjunct Venus. President Obama had sun conjunct Venus, but it was in Leo. Okay, so past. Yes, he's, he has suffered uh, great disappointments with the Five of Cups. The, this, is, this is about him, you know, losing family members. This is about all the disappointments he's gone through. I like seeing that in the past, and I like seeing that he has grieved, because that brings in wholeness for a person. Presently, with the Two of Pentacles, this, this has to do with, you know, he's juggling. He's trying to keep everything going. Uh, he might even be negotiating uh, that there's that possibility, um, but it it's it's Jupiter and Capricorn. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to say with the Five of Cups. Um, well, here, <laughs> the Empress is any and all things Venus. Okay, uh, the Five of Swords uh, brings us into, well, I think I did say uh, Venus and Aquarius, so you have to be careful about being too detached. And with uh, the Five of Cups, uh, we're in uh, Mars and Scorpio territory. And he he's done very, very well in that department. I think, wait, does he have, I think he might, yeah, 
He has Mars in Scorpio. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Yeah. He, he's like a master at grieving, I think. Okay, so with the Two of Pentacles, let's get back here. Well, with the two of, two of Pentacles, we are in Jupiter in Capricorn. So it's all about expanding in, in the, the you know, material realm, uh, the, the realm of resources. So it has to do with being you know, adaptable and flexible and uh, time management. You know? So he's dealing with time management. He's dealing with uh, prioritizing what matters. So that's, that's excellent especially to have upright and not reversed. I love having this upright as well for him, uh, especially with a full moon coming up, you know? Okay, so what's hanging over him? <laughs> the support, the support to get us back to a place that is um, graceful, and a boundary around, you know, that, that graceful, easy place that we can get back to where life doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Our only struggle should really just be to keep our hearts open. Yes, life on earth isn't, isn't easy, but it can be easier if we create that. We are the creators of our own reality, and it starts, you know, it's an inside job. It starts within each and every one of us. So, but um, astrologically, this is Venus in Virgo, and it is all about being grateful, being very, very grateful, being self-sufficient and independent. It has everything to do with, you know, nature, because of course Venus in Virgo, like the in unity with nature. But, you know, there is that luxury that's in there. So I, I, I like that because he'll help us get to a place where we have more abundance. You know, he can help turn this around. Like after the election, we can be in a much more abundant place. But this card is all about, you know, the forces that are in motion. So this is what he's dealing with. And remember, you know, he, he was with Obama when he helped turn around the, you know, the, what they call the Great Recession. Oh, I remember those days. It was awful. Okay, so in his future, with the Seven of Cups reversed, well, there might be a, a limitation of options. Uh, you know, you, you can see with, with the upright um, uh, position. It's like, well, you know you have options. What do you, you know, what do you really want is the question with this card. And, and it is Venus and Virgo. I'm mean, sorry, Venus and Scorpio. And um, this is Venus and Virgo. This is Venus and Scorpio. This, that's excellent because he has Venus and Scorpio. So, so for him uh, at this point, uh, in the future, the future position, he's going to have to be careful of getting distracted. You know, there could be like some, some little, you know, some temptation that, uh, you know, Trump throws out at him and he has to be careful not to take the bait, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, bait in the bear kind of energy. I'm, and he also, this also is one of those cards of um, like keep, keeping, keeping the lid on your emotional reactions. Uh, keeping secrets if you need to. You know, being, being careful about overdoing because it is, you know, Venus and Scorpio. And Scorpio's, you know, Scorpio energy, it kind of, it, you, you start in something and you, it goes and goes and goes and you have to, you have to know when to stop. Yeah, so I, I feel like there's just something that Donald Trump throws out at him, and he has to be careful not to take the bait. And then the with and this is only just you know full moon energy. This is not his whole you know campaign or anything like that. This is just the full moon. And with the Queen of Swords as the um, as the most likely outcome, 
Well, uh, when she's reversed, uh, you know, when she's when she's straight up, it's it's all uh, clear, you know, very clear sailing, and you're in a clear place because you've gone you've gone through and done your your deep emotional work, uh, you know. Hopefully, when she's reversed, um, there there could be, you know, what could the the outcome of the full moon for him could leave him feeling a little. Um, overly emotional it's possible and even a little bit bitter so I think that has to do with Trump I think Trump is just going to be I think he's going to be more ruthless than ever this you know the I think he's going to be so triggered with the full moon with Don, Donald Trump will be so triggered over the full moon that um, he's he's just gonna be you know spewing his vitriol so let me go ahead and layer the um, the, the laner mon just to get a little more information. Okay, so full moon. Full moon for Joe. Okay, so forces in motion, and I'll go ahead and just lay them out and then I'll dive in. Nice challenges. Okay. The past. Presently. Uh, karmically, what's hanging over? Uh, his future and the most likely outcome. Okay, actually, I can put these down here. Okay, so the letter card has to do with the vote. So the forces in motion, of course, is for him to get the votes. The challenge is that I. Uh, there's some kind of like kind of just nagging on him, gnawing at him about votes being lost. Maybe this, maybe this uh, situation that Donald Trump has been, uh, you know, what, what Donald Trump has been doing has been to do everything that he can to slow down the vote, to to destroy vote vote by mail, even though he voted by mail. <laughs> or he has, you know, in the past. I don't know if he will be this year uh, or if he's already voted. I don't know. But this this is about Joe, and his challenge is would be some kind of a, the toxic... I, I don't get that it has to do with a, a, a loss. I get that it has to do with a to, the toxic voting reality that we're all going through because of Donald Trump. And... Now, in the past, he's, I think he's been watching, watching that clearly. Or it could be that he's been watched as well. Oh, yeah, this, is, this, is, this, this speaks to that place where uh, he's been, uh, you know, spied on. This is Rudy Giuliani going to Ukraine trying to get dirt on him. This is, um, which I, I love that Putin spoke out and said there was nothing there. <laughs> And of course, he's, he's you know Putin's sucking up to to Biden because he can tell he's losing. Uh, so there, so there's that, right? But so in the past, Joe Biden has been watched. He's been spied on and watched. Presently, he's just going to keep working it with the whip card here. Presently, what's going on for him is he's just going to keep working it. He's going to be spinning the plates. He's going to be uh, focusing on priorities. Uh, and, you know, all the resources, and he's just going to keep working at it. This is a card of, like, exercise and work, work, work. Um, now, it, the karma that's hanging over him is success. He's, you know, shining his light and revealing that, you know, he's the peaceful way to go. Uh, his future, well, with the tree, I think what this is about is that he's... This is going to be very helpful for the health of the nation. 
and especially because of COVID. Yeah, there's there's going to be more more warmth and attention, and um, you know work going into going into uh, protecting us from from COVID nineteen from the virus. And from the, the virus that Donald Trump has been, Donald Trump has been a virus himself. All these dictators all over the world, they've been a virus themselves. It's like, no wonder we have a virus on our hands all worldwide. No wonder. So we have to, you know, we have to heal that. Now, as far as most likely outcome, well, the, the rose ha can have to do with seduction, but it's also attraction, you know, it's like, putting out, you know, the rose of, of peace. And, and especially in very, you know, cloudy times. I, I think that the likely outcome here is that even though there's some ruthlessness coming through with Donald Trump, that people will be attracted to, to Joe to help, because these cards go together, this is the coronavirus, to help with the coronavirus. Yeah, in whatever small way he can at this, at, you know, at, at this point. Because Donald Trump has just been this child that goes out and roars in his pride. So, I, uh, yeah, I, I really get that, <laughs> Joe, what Joe's going to be going through this full moon, on the full moon, it's gonna, there's going to be like a fever pitch of dealing with Trump in his baloney. His, as Joe would call it, malarkey. So, yeah, so there's that. Okay, well, I think that's all I'm seeing. And I'll just close this up and say thank you for listening and watching. And I welcome your comments and questions. Um, and um, except for the trolls, you know, no, no, not with the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll be back later. Okay, thank you.